So this is me on the toilet. This is where my feet are. How many inches is that? Talk about a throne. This is a porcelain throne and my feet. Don't touch the ground. <laughs> we'll see if the other ones, if they can touch as well. If that's more than four inches, but at least your yeah. toes will touch. <clears throat> where do you put them right now? I put them right here. This is my the potty, edge of the shower. my potty squatty substitute. <laughs> Join us on the Elliot as we realize our five-year plan with the kids. Grown up, moved out, graduated from college. We take the dog, sold everything, and kitted out the boat so we can cruise the Pacific Northwest all while living and working in the heart of Seattle. So today we are getting new toilets in the heads. So I'm looking forward to that because these are extremely loud. <laughs> Yep, so this will be the last time I'll have to listen to that. Yay! We will have quiet toilets. This is Tucker Rolls from Captain Commode. Um, Correct. Kind of a legend in the industry in the <laughs> Seattle area with marine sanitation, uh, you know, starting at fisheries and then marine sand. But mm -hmm. uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself and, and the biz. Well, um, I've been uh, pretty much strictly an expert on toilets for about the last eight to ten years or so. Um, I work on everything from uh, vacuum flush from Dometic, Master Flush, uh, Tecma from Thetford, like you guys have, yeah. um, Grocos, uh, Wilcox Crittenden. Um, uh, yeah, pretty much everything. Everything plumbing, anyway. That's right. And so, he, Tucker knows that the product's solid. Like anyone you talk to in this area, you know, Tuck's the go to. Um, but he just started his business, Captain Commode. That's correct. To the rescue. Yeah. Uh, so when we we decided on what the toilets were going to be, um, you know, th there was well, there was no short list. It was just Tucker. So uh, we gave him a ring. We're excited to have him put these in and uh, have some nice quiet toilets. Yes. Yes. That's that was the goal, right? Right. That's Compared right. To the yes. rock crushers that we currently and have. Feet on the floor, and um, yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> All the things as we like to say. So cool. Well, All right. Awesome. Thanks for thank you. Look forward to doing this. Here's the first toilet that has been brought down. They're gonna get the second one, bring it down, and hopefully we can at least get one installed today. I think that's the goal, but we'll see how it goes. Well, Tucker from Captain Commode uh, went and picked up our Tecma toilets. That's what we ended up landing on uh, after evaluating all the other toilets that are out there. Um, these things are, are nice. If you look at them, um, they have this soft closed lid, so so that's gonna be nice. You don't have to worry about them banging. Like and that. then, yeah. And these are short ones. So, cause the ones that we have right now are on a three and a half inch pedestal and Carlin's toes uh, don't touch the ground. No. So these mm -hmm. short ones uh, will we'll solve that problem, obviously. That'll be great. But the only thing is to be able to get a deep bowl like what we have on these, uh, that means that some of the internals of the Tecma actually hang below the floor. So Tucker's going to have to cut the pedestal that these sit on uh, and put a hole in there so that basically all the guts, the internals can hang uh, down below that. It's pretty common practice, I guess. I didn't know that for these these short uh, toilets. But so that's really going to be you know, to begin with probably some of the hardest hardest part and then he's going to go in and do our front head first so we should have that hopefully fingers crossed up and running tonight uh we'll use the the other one uh, in the meantime the old one in our master because we have two, two. thank goodness like, yeah as we said in our last video about must-haves and a liveaboard head you want to have two just in case one breaks because yep. it happens it does yeah, it's rare that they break in a house, but it's not so rare that these things can break in a boat. But these Tecmas, a lot of people say that they've had them, and they've had them for decades in their boat, and they've never had an issue with them, so we're looking forward to that. Yeah, that's important. So these Tecma toilets are electronic, electric uh, toilets, and so they're not vacuum flushes, those types of things. It's a, literally an electric toilet. However, electric toilets have come a long way uh, over the years, and this particular one, um, has a control box and it has a touch screen uh, for controlling the bowl. We kind of upgraded for the touch screen. It's a little bit of a splurge, but um, this module right here 
is an IP67 waterproof module that disconnects everything together. Uh, it connects to the toilet and the motor and the solenoid for the water. So that's what all of these pieces are. It's got a nice wiring harness that plugs into everything. So it's actually pretty easy to put together. And you just screw this to, you know, just a flat surface, either under or down in the, the bilge area or mechanical area, or you can put it in, in your, your cabinets and your heads, which is what we're gonna do. Uh, it's gonna just go right in that area. And then we have the controller. So there's a bunch of different controllers you can get for Tecmas. You can get ones that just have a single button, it's a single flush. It always uh, refills the bowl to the same level, and then it flushes and refills the bowl again. Uh, generally, you can push that button and it will drain itself and lock so that when you're underway with the boat, you don't have to worry about water slush around in the bowl. We wanted to be able to have the flexibility of being able to fill the bowl when we want to, uh, when you... When, when you need to. When you need to, uh, when it's when it's number two. Uh, but when it's number one, you can be able to just not fill that bowl, uh, you know, be able to use it and then flush. It'll flush out the bowl and clean it, but you don't have to use that extra water. And we spend a lot of time, you know, easily 50 to 75 days on the hook per year or on the anchor. And so, you know, we conserve our water a bit. We do have a water maker, but we don't want to run it all the time because it can be a little bit noisy. So the controller on the Tecmas, we decided to do an upgrade for ours. Uh, this is the, the two level one, so it has a before, where you can fill the bowl, and an after. Uh, now on this particular one, you notice this glass. They do have a soft touch one as well that has kind of rubber buttons on the thing, but over time of pushing it over and over and over, they do wear out. Uh, so we decided since we live aboard and it's gonna have a a ton of uh, action. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we did the glass one, that way they won't wear out. And this is the controller that it sits on top of. Uh, it has a bit of a night light to it, which is cool. Uh, okay. So when you walk in, it will just light up. Uh, the other one that is interesting is the back of this has the water fill. So when you do the before, and you want to be able to set the level on how much water goes in the bowl. Uh, this right here is the controller. Uh, it just has a little potentiometer in here and you just screw it, you know, more and less. This would probably be a problem if you mounted this somewhere that you didn't have access to the back of this. So you'd have to unscrew it and pull that out every time. That would be a pain in the backside uh, to be able to adjust it and then put it back in. With us, it's not so bad because the cabinet that we have this in on both heads, we have accessibility uh, right through the cabinet to be able to get to this so we can kind of adjust it or readjust it if we're out and about and we want to have it fill less because we're going to spend an extended time on the hook or we really want to keep an eye on our water consumption, we can do that and we can set it back when we get back to the dock. So it's going to work out just fine for us. But this toilet is the Silent 2G, so it's the second generation Silent model. Uh, from Tecma and if you look at it this thing all the mechanicals are Really well insulated so I, I can move this um, all the through bolts have rubber mountings etc So you really don't have to worry at all uh, about any vibrations or, or sound coming from this motor And this is not a lightweight motor this thing has the highest flushing capacity of emaciator toilet on the market right now. It can literally go up uh, almost 40 feet and can go horizontally about 120 feet. It's insane how powerful this pump is. We opted for a 24 volt model because uh, the wiring that we had on the boat would have been undersized uh, for 12 volt because it's such a powerful motor. Uh, it demands a 30 amp breaker on 20 four volt, so it's a monster of a motor. Uh, so we're excited about this. Not only is it way quieter, but it's much more powerful, uh, so we don't have to worry about having, uh, well, leftovers in the bowl, or having dirty bowls. Uh, it really does a great job of cleaning itself and making sure that there's no waste left in the system, which creates stinkiness. So we're excited about these. Uh, let's go cut a hole in the floor. It's going to be the last dump for this toilet. <laughs> <laughs>
Pun intended. Taking out all the hoses from the head. Down below here is the tank. Next step. Uh, running a new discharge hose from the toilet to the tank and it will be up in uh, size from what you had before, one and a half inch. Cool. Here are your new controller. You mm -hmm. have this box that I'll be mounting under the sink here. And then, you, you know, it, it's the, this gray coil here goes to your new glass panel, which is right here. So that's gonna be your new panel. Mm -hmm. All right, one of these soldiers does not belong. And it's this one right here. So these are the two new ones are hanging out until tomorrow morning when we get the floor cut out so that they can sit in the floor. But this, this is uh, one of the old ones. Uh, we would generally hand it off to somebody else and let somebody else do it. But literally this is a toilet that nobody wants. Jasco makes the loudest toilet in the entire world. And this is a Jabsco knockoff. It's by Johnson and it's a piece of trash. This is, I shouldn't say it. It's a very loud toilet and nobody wants it. You can't give these things away. Now I'm sure a bunch of people in the comments are gonna be like, I would have taken it. Well, you're too slow. We're gonna throw this in the dumpster so that we have some space out in the back. So these toilets are like 50 pounds a piece. These toilets are like 15. It's not that bad. Ready to go? Let's do it. Let's do it. By the way, this dock cart, tailor made. Best thing since sliced bread. Let's go, babe. Right. Boom! So this floor, because of the, the toilet bowl that was sitting on here, it's uh, unfinished porcelain, so it's really rough. I've been polishing out uh, with some of this polo shine uh, and just a buffer because this is Corian so I've been polishing out the, the scratches that it's left and in fact it, it, there's a place where the toilets rocked over the past 12 years back and forth got a pretty good notch that's in the Corian so we're trying to polish it out and I'm measuring out exactly how wide the footprint is that kind of got scraped in here by the last toilet and see if the other one uh, is going to cover this area so let's uh, let's go take a look and make sure that the foot is going to cover all right the foot of this is about 15 and a half inches from the back wall, which means that we're gonna have about an inch and a half exposed on that Corian that didn't used to be, and it's scratched up from that toilet. So I'm really gonna have to go after that. And the width here, it's about 11 inches, and at the front here, it's about eight inches wide. So we're gonna have this gap that was kind of ground down into the Corian, about that big. So I'm gonna have to polish that more. And then um, these toilet, Oh, this is bad. What's up? These are the wrong toilets. Oh, no. <laughs> so there's a... There's a Tecma 2G line. It's the newest line they have. And they have a plus, and they have a standard. And the standard is more of a round bowl, which, you know... It doesn't look as nice, but we only have so much room in our heads because they're kind of small. And we only have about 18 inches from the wall. And these are, these are 20 inches. It's not gonna fit. These are the pluses. They got the wrong, they sent the wrong ones. Yeah, there's not gonna fit. Cause that's like two inches farther out. We won't be able to. It won't fit. It won't fit. All right. It's screwed. We already took the toilet out. Thank God we have two heads. <laughs> yeah, remember that video we made about having redundant on a head? If not, we would have had, oh, we already threw away the other head. That's right, we'll give them a call. They're good folks, we'll get it figured out. But we're one head for, with the supply chain and everything, these took two and a half months. We're not gonna have a, we're not gonna have another head until March. I am going to finally have a toilet in my head. Now I'm looking forward to that. Next step is cutting out a template so we can cut out a hole to install the new toilet.
So now that this piece has been cut out, we can install the toilet. All right, Tucker's got the new heads in. Wanna take a look? Yeah. Looks awesome. Ooh, that is nice. First test, sit test. Feet touch the ground. Let's check this out, everybody. Oh yeah, they really do touch the ground. It's perfect. That's nice. I like it. Yeah. Much better. Now, second test, how loud is it? Right. Let's see. I'd say a big yes. So that second run, make sure that if there's anything left in the lines, it blows it out. And then I've got it set up in residential mode where it actually adds a little bit of water at the bottom, not too much, uh, so that when you go to use it, um, it cleans the bowl on that second spray, but it also has something in the bowl, just like you would have at home. The second mode is you can hold down both fingers on these buttons, and when it blinks, let go. And what that does is sets it in sail mode. So it'll go through its flush. Run again. But there's no water that came out. So now we have a dry bowl. So with this, just like we went through earlier, you can now fill it. You can use it for number two, and then you can flush it. Or you can just leave it dry, use it for number one, and flush. But it being in sail mode, it will always have a dry bowl, so you never have to worry about water sloshing out of it. That's the cool part with this control panel, is that you can switch between basically that single button use, like a residential, or you can switch it to sail mode, which gives you a dry bowl. You kind of have the best of both worlds uh, to be able to deal with water management, obviously when you're running the boat, it's, it's pretty slick. Uh, one tip, when you try to go through and program this thing, you better use both thumbs or both four fingers because if you try to program it with two fingers, it must be because it's an induction uh, touch panel or something like that, it will never program. It drove me crazy and I must have put like 12 gallons in the tank when I was trying to get it to switch over into the mode. I thought it, I thought it wasn't working but you really you have to use two separate fingers from the two separate hands to be able to get away with it, and then it will program. So there you go. Ta-da. Well, I was a little nervous. I don't know why, just looking at it, it didn't look that deep, you know? But I measured the Johnson and it's like, <laughs> it came out, that came out wrong. Uh, yeah, the Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got yeah. it now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.